everyone. My name is Katie Hornberger, and I am a certified genetic counselor who works in reproductive medicine. One of my roles is to help people who are utilizing a sperm donor find a good match for their family building goals. Not everybody has a family member, a friend, or acquaintance that they can use for sperm donation, and some people in those cases use a sperm bank. Today, I'm sharing nine questions you need to ask your doctor before you begin your sperm donor search. If you're interested in a comprehensive guide on how to choose a sperm donor, I've got the guide for you. Check out the link down below. It includes considerations that donor conceived people want you to know if you're considering using a sperm donor. Explanations on what a bunch of the labs that are run on sperm donors are, such as RH factor, CMV status, genetic testing, considerations when you're reviewing donors' family histories, and more. So check out my 10-page comprehensive how to choose your sperm donor guide if you're interested. Okay, let's get into it. The first six questions are logistics related. Question number one, ask your doctor if there's a sperm bank that they recommend, but go beyond that and ask why are they recommending that sperm bank? Is it because a rep took them out to lunch or is it because of their reputable and ethical practices? Is it because of the quality of sperm that your doctor has seen coming from that sperm bank? Is it because their family limits? Is it because they have a diverse set of donors? It can be really helpful to understand why the recommendation is being made as you take it into consideration. Question number two. In order to determine what type of vials to purchase, it can be very helpful to understand what fertility treatment you will be undergoing. And this is probably going to be based on your health history, your family unit. It's going to be based on your fertility evaluation. So the question to ask is based on my evaluation, what mode of conception or what treatment is going to be best for me and why? Are we thinking about ICI, intracervical insemination? You can do those at home. IUI, intrauterine insemination, an insemination that's performed in a clinic, or IVF, in vitro fertilization, which is quite a bit more expensive and more involved than IUI and ICI. Question number three is what vial type should I purchase? And if those vial types aren't available, is there any other type I can use as a backup? It's important to understand that each sperm bank sells different vial types. They may have different prices depending on the quantity, quality of sperm in each of the vials. They also may be meant for different types of conception. So you may need to buy a certain type of vial depending on what type of treatment is planned. So be sure to ask what type of vials do you need me to purchase? And is there wiggle room? Is there flexibility or multiple types of vials I can purchase? If you want to learn more about the vial types, that is included in my guide. But you can also just visit the sperm bank's websites and they'll explain what each different vial type at their bank means. Question number four, although this is not related to picking a sperm donor, I am a strong believer that before you go into fertility treatment, which is financially, emotionally, physically quite an ordeal for most people, you should know what your odds are. So make sure you've asked, what are my chances for success with each ICI, IUI, or IVF cycle? It's important to know that even for the most healthy egg source or healthy individual, cycles don't always work. They don't. So you want to know what your personalized chance for success is before you get moving forward. Question number five, if your family building goals include having more than one child, and ideally you'd like to have multiple children with the same sperm donor rather than switching sperm donors throughout your family building, you want to determine how many vials do you need to purchase now. Inventory of sperm donors is always going to be fluctuating at sperm banks, and you cannot count on the idea that if you buy four vials from a donor today and you decide two years later after having a child that you're ready to have a second child, ideally with the same donor, it is very possible that there will be no remaining inventory from that original donor. So ideally, you want to buy all the vials you would need for your family building at once to ensure that you're going to be able to use the same donor. Now, that can be very costly and you need information from your doctor to determine how many vials do they think that you would need per pregnancy. And that will depend on what type of treatment is being planned and your fertility evaluation. So you could ask a question like, if in my family we want to have two children, how many vials do you think I should buy now? Question number six, a logistics question, but a good one to know is, how soon prior to my cycle do I need to ship my vials from the sperm bank? Typically, vials are going to be stored at the sperm bank until it's time for your IUI or IVF. 
But given there can be issues with weather or with just shipment in general, you want to make sure that the vials are received by your clinic with enough wiggle room in order for them to perform fertilization or to perform that IUI in conjunction with your cycle. So ask how many days before X do I need to have the vial shipped to the clinic? The last three questions are less logistical and more about how to filter for a donor that is going to be the most compatible with you and give you the best chances for a healthy ongoing pregnancy. In this video, I'm not getting into all of the details and explaining what each of these factors are, but if you purchase my guide or if you look out for future videos on donor conception, I am planning to post some more comprehensive information about each of these things. Question number seven, have I been tested for CMV? If yes, what is my status and how does that impact the CMV status of the donor I sh should be searching for? If your clinic hasn't already explained CMV status to you, that could be a good question to ask them about. Question number eight is what is my blood type and does this impact RH factor and whether I should be looking for a donor who is RH negative? If the person planning to conceive and carry a pregnancy is RH negative, oftentimes doctors may recommend an RH negative donor. There certainly can be some wiggle room here, so be sure to have your clinical team explain to you what their recommendation is. Question number nine, the last one. Have I undergone carrier screening? If you haven't heard of carrier screening, it's a genetic test that can tell us whether we are at an increased risk to have a child with one of many genetic diseases included on the panel. It should be offered to anybody who's planning a pregnancy. If you or your egg source, or if you're a same-sex couple who both have eggs, if both of you have undergone carrier screening, you want to get a copy of those results, and you want to ask how those results impact how you should be filtering for donors. Again, this is all explained in my guide, but the starting place is to ask, have I had it done? And if so, how does this impact my search? And if you haven't had carrier screening done or your X-Source hasn't had carrier screening done, you want to ask, well, should I consider carrier screening? What would it do for me in my donor search and in general? Be sure to ask about cost of the testing, the lab they'll order through, and turnaround time for getting the results back because genetic testing, like carrier screening, usually takes at least three weeks or so to come back. So that may impact your timeline for treatment. All right, everyone. Thank you for listening. I hope you found those nine questions to ask your doctor helpful. Again, they are all included in my guide on how to choose a sperm donor. If you're interested in downloading it, following the link down below, as well as a bunch of other information that can be helpful as you start navigating the process of looking for a sperm donor through a sperm bank. Take care, everyone. Don't forget to hit subscribe to see new content on sperm donation.